Hey everybody, in this video we're going to look at the um, extension of Q given by adjoining root 5 and the square root of 11. Uh, this is going to be very much like the previous set of videos where we looked at Q adjoining the square root of 7, uh, only now we're adjoining two things, so it makes it seem like it should be much more complicated. In fact, uh, we're going to use what we did in the previous video to shortcut some of the work. So, first thing we notice is that Q adjoin the square root of 5 and the square root of 11 is the same thing as if I first adjoined the square root of 5 to Q, and then I adjoined the square root of 11 to that. So I can add some extra brackets there. And so it could be the case that the square root of 11 is already in this field. That's a possibility. So let's try to rule that out. So what if I could write the square root of 11 as being an element in Q adjoin root 5? And, and we'll reason by analogy that everything in Q adjoin root 5 must look like A plus B times the square root of 5. Now, if I square this, then I get 11 is equal to A squared plus 2AB root 5 plus 5b squared. And now I can solve for the square root of 5. And when I do, I'll get that the square root of 5 is equal to 11 minus a squared minus 5b squared divided by 2ab. And as long as 2ab is not 0, then this makes perfect sense. And we know that's a rational number because, well, from the start, we were assuming A and B were rational numbers. Okay, but of course, this is a contradiction. The square root of 5 is not a rational number. All right, uh, so, well, could it be that 2AB was 0? Well, if 2AB was 0, that would mean that A was 0 or B was 0. Now, if A was 0, then that would tell you that root 11 was just equal to b root 5. And so root 11 fifths was equal to b, which is a rational number, but of course root 11 fifths is not a rational number. And similarly, if b was equal to 0, then you would have root 11 is equal to a, a rational number. Again, root 11, not a rational number, contradiction. All right, so 2ab is not going to be 0. So in all cases, we're satisfied the square root of 11 is not going to be an element of q adjoining the square root of 5. Okay, so we're really getting something bigger. Well, reasoning just as we did before, we know that if we adjoin the square root of 11 to q adjoin root 5, that every element will look like some element e coming from q adjoining the square root of 5 plus another element f from q adjoin root 5 times root 11. Okay, so here e and f are in q adjoin the square root of 5. Argument is exactly the same as before. Okay, but now we know that each of these e and f's from the q adjoin the square root of 5 can be rewritten. The e can be written as a plus b root 5, and the f can be written as, say, some c plus d root 5 and then multiplied by root 11, where here all the a, b, c, and d are rational numbers. Okay, but distributing, in at least this last case, we get a plus b root 5 plus c root 11 plus d root 55. So the set of all those, where again a, b, c, and d are rational. Okay, and that is what we wanted to show. 